So the phosphorescence of thought refers to this little moment in which he imagines a Martian looking at the earth. And he says the thing that would be most impressive to a Martian would, would not be the, 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 the blue of its oceans or the green of its trees, but the phosphorescence of its thought. He had this idea that there was this incredible incandescent energy of human thought, this, what he called the, the, the psychosphere, or the, the, would advance into the, the noosphere, that is the sphere of the mind, that it was in, encompassing the earth. And there was this scintillating network of activity just based on human thought and energy. I love that phrase. You know, I, I love the way that, it, I love what it means about the world that we live in. So this poem is about this, well, it's kind of about the mind and it's about, this, about these birds that I see uh, in this place where I do a lot of bird watching, which is on the Des Plaines River, which is a little, uh, kind of nasty little uh, river that's on the western, um, runs through the western suburbs of Chicago. It emerges kind of beautifully and pristinely uh, up in Wisconsin and then is, you know, is sootied in soil as it makes its way eventually to the Mississippi. Um, but as it passes through Chicago, more and more junk is dumped into it, unsurprisingly. And there are two words that kind of center or, or locate the poem. I'm, I'll explain these and then I'll, I'll actually read some things. Um, the words are, uh, and they're both words that I made up. The first one is, is lutrescent. I kind of will explain that in the poem, as you'll see, that I'm just about to read. And lutrescence is, it's, it's the word putrid ma- matched with the word, uh, you know, lucid, or it's, it's putrescence with something that's lu- lucid. So it's light gone rotten. I feel like that's, that's, what, that's what evolution is. It's, it's, it's light that just keeps, it's like fruit that gets riper and riper and riper. And there's something beautiful and nasty about it. And then the other word is uh, autochthonous. It's kind of a crazy word. So it comes from autochthonous, which is from the Greek self, auto, chthonos for earth. So it's something that comes from the earth. But I wanted to slip in there nomos, which is a Greek for law. So it's, the, it's, it's like the earth's, the law of itself, the earth's own law, which I feel that's what evolution is. You know, that's the earth's law. That's the earth's expression. It's, that's its authority in some way. This is the opening of the poem. The wren, the mind, allows to sing, alights and flits on branches bare of anything other than the sun's ceaseless iodine. The woods at dusk flood with like sutras medita- <clears throat> meditators seep their thoughts in. Neuro- neurochemicals recall from the galaxy's antique axiometry. Alongside the Des Plaines River folding creamy gray through the trees, bubbles with pungent yeasts emplumed in cottony lutrid foam engineered by embankments men pile up to keep the river tame. The mind. The mind assuming reality. The mind's field of forces, its fluid exuberance, rebeginning, leaping up, folding back into terminal unities, endlessly varying. Cluster, synthesis, network, node, centration, the re-entering mental impulse, the herring gulls circling, their yellow gapes, little crimson dots, breeding season, the mallards, their rotating strokes around the worlds, dabbling, those lurid, irisized heads, lutrid, lutrescent, that's the mind's excessive novelty, a tool preposterously ductile language, pulling sound, image, light fluidly together. Freely commandeers to feel reality, to imagine light gone rotten. The wren, again, a house wren, its beak a slightly silvered sickle, its remembered song rapidly rolling a bubbling liquid trill. An outlandish complexity copied inventively from an adult, a male, not his father. A descending chirruping, a draining descant he variously daylong in tones, marking the little log he's nesting in to begin. The woods, the little shabby forest preserve, the swerve of its trashy paths, the partying and its clearings, the little house wren in it, 
his cinnamon supercilium, the drab pattern of his plumage, and his mate, their clutch of seven pea-sized eggs, luminously speckled, secreted deep in a cavity excavated down into the fallen log. The red-headed woodpeckers, the flickers, darts defying gravity, their malars, neon slash, the red-bellied picketus, its deeply undulating flight, the avian cocaine I take him for. What evolutionary acquisition does that vibrant red express? It's true, woodpeckers are like cocaine. You see them, it's like, wow. What evolutionary acquisition does that vibrant red express? And what do I love in loving thee? Lumen de lumine, deum vero de deu vero, genitum non factum, consubstantialum naturi, perquem omnia facta sunt. So that, that comes from the credo in the, the Latin mass. It's the uh, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through whom all things were made. So I swapped out patri, which is Latin for father, with naturi, which is nature. So one in being with nature, through whom all things were made. It's a little blasphemous, a little bit. With the oldest cherubim of knowledge, the fanaphagist cherubs devouring with their bodies the light they transform into scissoring flame, flared forth sword-like and brandished, unspeakably world-like, fully recklessly imagined. We now begin our study of the mind within. Let us use wor the words psychic overtone, suffusion, or fringe. Let us speak in whispers of the one of the meticulous hinge on the book of knowledge hidden in rapt prelusion. Apart. Come. Let us use the word re-entry. Let us sing the differentiating motions whereby thoughts, signals, slide, and runnels down the mind's Great glacial expanse, pooling at the base, lubricating its massive shelves, its agonized calves. Let us use the word epistrophe to mean the turning back of otherwise organized energy to the supra-organized diadem of the Godhead, premeditative acts of prayer, precognitive flights of birds, the warbler, the oriole, the blackbird, the bunting, the sparrow, the water thrush, the warbler, the wren, the wren, the hermit thrush, the warbler, the red start, the yellow throat, the sparrow, the kinglet, the kestrel, the hawk, the wren, the kestrel, the cranes. Another list. I like the lists. <clears throat> the slain wren, the golden crested wren, the hunted wren, the little king, the father's murderer, God's sparrow, the prophetic bird, the ornithological fact, the halcyon myth, the floating nest, the vivid, vivid plumage plunged into the sea, the king of trees, the soul of the oak, the copper feathered, the copper -feathered pheasant, the hornet-headed drake, the wind-colored snipe, the crimson-hooked gull, the awkward young hawk, the azimuth of thrush, the terror glossy crow, the wren in the central place, the starlings and twirling squadrons, the arcanoetic cranes, the fattening hens, the unabashed chickadee, the sepulchral swans, the slaughterous rookery, the autarkic bird lord, the pleromatic fixation, the autistic nucleus, the Canaanite mythology, the silly Celtic lore, the centroverted formation, the ocean of Godhead, the self reentrant pathology, the life spanning midst, the cannibalism, the sorceress who transforms men into animals, the firmamentally liberating act, the inner voice. <clears throat> 